Well, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Roberto Lenton. I'm the founding executive director of the Robert uh, B. Dougherty Water for Food Institute here at the University of Nebraska. Um, and on behalf of all my colleagues at the Institute and on behalf of uh, J.B. Milliken, the president of the University of Nebraska, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you all to this fifth annual conference, um, Water for Food conference at this university. Um, it has the theme, as you know, of too hot, too wet, too dry, uh, and the sub-theme, building resilient agroecosystems. Um, and it's really a, a wonderful opportunity for all of us here to learn how to cope more effectively uh, with the climate extremes that are becoming so common to those of us not only here in Nebraska, but in the rest of the world. Here in Nebraska, as many of you know, we had one of the worst droughts in the last several decades last year in 2012, um, and also one of the greatest heat waves. And in 2011, we had very serious floods. So certainly here, we've been uh, very much uh, in touch with these climate extremes, but so have so many other parts of the world. We have really a lot of exciting things in store for you uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, we have this morning a research in action panel discussion. Uh, we have keynote presentations uh, in plenary sessions from a really distinguished array of speakers. Um, we have two lunchtime talks that I'm very much looking forward to uh, from eminent uh, climate scientists. We have a panel discussion on surviving the, 20th, uh, the uh, 2012 drought, um, 80 years of innovation that allowed um, uh, the state to cope very effectively uh, with last year's drought, and I think you'll find it a very uh, compelling story. We will have again this year, as we have in previous years, a uh, what we call a view from the field, an agricultural producers panel, where we will have uh, agricultural producers from Brazil, from Nebraska, from Colorado, sharing the experience uh, with us. We have a panel discussion on resilience in in uh, agricultural landscapes. We have a really interesting discussion on livestock and water with perspectives from all over the world on this important topic. Uh, we have a, a session that I'm sure you'll find appealing on cool tools and technology for water and agricultural research. Um, and at the end of the conference, once it's actually formally closed, we're going to have a water, food, and health caucus um, which is going to provide an opportunity to exchange views on the health dimensions of these water and food challenges. Um, so this conference, like uh, all the previous four conferences, are a wonderful opportunity to interact. Uh, we have people of, uh, of a really interesting mix um, from all over the world, from uh, producers to uh, consumers to researchers to practitioners to policy makers, um, and all of us united by a common interest in these issues of water and food. So I think, I hope those of you who come from outside the university will have an opportunity to get to know our faculty and learn a little bit more about what they're doing. Um, and also, I hope you'll have more of an opportunity to, uh, to explore in depth what our institute, our new institute, uh, is engaged in. Um, because if anything, this last drought has taught us um, how important the mission of this institute is, how important it is to find better ways uh, to do more with less. Um, and in 2012, it was to do more with a lot, lot less water. Um, and that's really what this institute is all about. I see ourselves as a, as in a sense, a frontier institute exploring really in a very innovative way how the resources of a major land-grant university can brought, be brought to bear in a very focused way on this topic of water and food and how to provide more food security to a growing world population uh, under very serious uh, water constraints. We're very proud of what we've been able to achieve at this stage of our development in the Institute. It's just about a year 
since I arrived here, um, just over a year since I arrived here in February of 2012, um, and there were three pieces of news that I wanted to share with you uh, this morning about our institute. Uh, the first piece of news is that after an extensive search, we've been able to uh, recruit successfully two outstanding scientists for two critical positions. One is the director of the Nebraska Water Center, an integral part of our institute, um, and the second is our director for research. We're going to have a formal uh, press release later in the day, uh, but I just wanted to alert you uh, to this uh, really important development. Our director for the Nebraska Water Center will be joining us in August, and the director for research will be joining us in, uh, in October. Um, the second uh, thing I wanted to share with you is that after a lot of consultation uh, and feedback from faculty, we have reached almost the end of our strategic planning process that has been an important activity, um, and we will be discussing with our board this evening uh, a, uh, a almost final draft of our strategic plan and our operational plan for the next uh, two years. Um, and then the third thing that I wanted to uh, share with you, and this is primarily for faculty um, within uh, the uh, University of Nebraska, um, as I think all of you have recognized, this annual Water for Food conference um, has built a strong track record of stimulating new connections and discussions, and one of our goals has been to find a way to maintain these fruitful interactions throughout the year. So starting in the fall academic semester, and with the assistance of my colleague, Professor John Gates, uh, we're going to be hosting a weekly venue to discuss research needs and collaboration opportunities in an informal setting. And I hope that many of you will join us for this opportunity to strengthen our collaborative ties across the water for food disciplines. A conference of this sort, um, I'm sure you all recognize, is a, is a huge, huge undertaking, um, and it's growing in complexity from year to year. Um, I'm going to do some proper thank yous at the end of this conference, but let me um, just single out uh, two people and their colleagues. Um, and the first is, is, uh, is Prem Paul. He's vice chancellor, as many of you know, of research and economic development here at UNL. Um, and I really have to express my gratitude to Prem for organizing the first four conferences with such distinction that he's set a, a hugely high standard, very, very difficult for us to, uh, to, uh, to follow that act. Um, as it were. So thank you, Prem, for all you did to bring us uh, to this point. Um, and secondly, I'd like to thank my associate director, Monica Norby, and her team. Uh, it's been an incredible job, an incredible journey to get you to this point. Um, and uh, we all owe Monica and her colleagues a huge debt of gratitude. 